cue the opening. Oh, I'll cue it. You cue the opening. And you'll hear it. Put the needle on the record. Hold on. I have to wait. Oh, well, it's a digital record. It's a digital. Don't scratch it. You're listening to Mike and John Got It Going On. Livingston County based podcast that's based in, well, Livingston County. And now, Mike and John. It's actually based in a basement. Yeah, in Livingston County. I thought Steve DeBruin actually did that better. He did a great opening yeah. for us. Uh, uh, St. Patty's Day Parade in uh, downtown Pinckney right. on Saturday. He had the whole thing memorized. I mean, not that there's a lot. And he's an actor. And it's his job to memorize lines. But uh, he, you know, he had it down. I was almost thinking maybe we should have him do the new open. Maybe we should have a different, oh, a guest opening a guest. every day. <laughs> okay, well, that's a lot of work. That's not, <laughs> we don't we're, we're not that hard. No, we're really not into working that hard. That's why we're in a basement really doing do. a podcast yeah. in the groovy little pod pad. First full day of spring here on this March 21st. Don't you wish we would have had yesterday's weather for the St. Paddy's Day break? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would, have been, it would have been a little nicer, but uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, you know, as for Saturday in Pinckney, the, and we mentioned this numerous times, I'll, it's worth saying again, boy, the crowd that was there for that rain, because the rain got steadier, because the forecast was it's going to rain and it should clear out before parade time. Well, that didn't quite happen. And in fact, the rain got steadier and, and, and more, you know, uh, forceful as yeah. the parade went on. But people came out and enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a great time in uh, downtown Pinckney, so thanks to all that stopped by and got their Mike and John Got It Going On inaugural bumper stickers. Right. Why don't you show it to them? I'm going to show it to them yeah, again. Sure. I have to take it out of the, well, you, yeah. out of the wrapping, out of your... Right. It, uh, I believe that's a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love your slow zoom that you have there. <laughs> okay, easy. This is like Pong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, yes. You got it? See? Yeah, okay. And uh, you can uh, buy those, by the way. Along on, with other Mike and John merch. Right. On the merch store at mikeandjohnpodcast.com. And uh, we put up a variety of items that you can uh, have that logo placed on. Coffee mugs, shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. Baseball-style shirts if you're getting ready for uh, for spring training in the regular season. Ooh, maybe we should have a Mike and John softball team. <laughs> Okay. There's only two of us. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we'll, a, we'll we be have, an easy win. <laughs> we, have, we have the coaches worked yeah, out. There I, you go. Yeah. Round, tag them all, we, John. Well, we're both bench coaches. Yeah, there you um, go. We have no team. But, uh, yeah, check it out to the merch store on our website, mikeandjohnpodcast.com. I think we should call it the Swag Shack. <laughs> No. No? Okay. No, we really shouldn't. No, not. we shouldn't. No, okay, gonna, we won't. I'm going to use my veto power on that one. Today is also a National Flower Day. Yeah. National Fragrance Day. Don't go too heavy on the fragrance. Yeah. Have you ever had a coworker who oh, I overdid think we've, it? We've worked with a few yeah. people that have overdone it on the uh, yeah. on the Cologne. Uh National French Bread Day, Jordan Genso, just so you know. Uh, Single Parents Day and uh, World Poetry Day, World Puppetry Day too. <laughs> Puppetry. Okay. Hmm. We are not puppets, although Somebody compared us. Well, you know, maybe this will be a good moment. We're going to do news in here in just a second. Uh, but uh, not the two old guys up on the yeah. puppets uh, in so, the theater. Uh, so I mean, Caitlin Meyer, who's a, a Livingston, or I should say, a, a Lansing Community College student, yeah, uh, worked up this caricature for us, that and right um, which is very cool. A lot of people have responded to it, said, "Oh, that looks really cool and awesome." Uh, somebody then, of course, made the comparison. They said. This looks like the two guys that are up in the balcony on the Muppets. And the thing was, at first, I'm like, that's outrageous. And I look and I go, oh, my God, you're right. <laughs> don't they just complain? Yeah. yeah. We would Waldorf never do, and... Uh, we would never do that. I, I don't... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like Kaz and Homer myself. <laughs> oh, hey, right. you Homer. There's a deep reference yeah. there. You're a little hot fudge. Well, there was hot fudge. That's hot fudge. That's right. Yeah. Coming off. So, uh, anyway. Uh, so, Caitlin Meyer, thank you very much, Uh very talented art student yeah. uh, putting that together, and uh, we want to thank her for, for her talents and efforts. And um, so, yeah, very cool. Wish her well on her studies. <laughs> right. So you don't end up in a basement doing right. a podcast. Yeah, don't do this, <laughs> please, kids. Don't do this at home. And yeah. without further ado, Gigo News with John King. All right, here's what's going on. Following Thursday's surprise resignation of Brighton City Manager Nate Geinzer, 
A special meeting is set tonight to discuss a potential search for a replacement. The nature of Geinzer's resignation remains unknown, although speculation is focused on last Thursday's council meeting, which got somewhat heated over a grant application. Councilmember Paul Gibson, who was appointed last month to fill the seat left vacant by the resignation of Sean Pippoli, argued with assistant to the city manager Henry Outlaw about a Facebook post made prior to the meeting that stated a grant application would be made to the Land and Water Conservation Fund and that the streetscape project would be going in for 2023 when that had not yet been determined. Geinzer twice tried to intervene and was forcefully told by Gibson it was his turn to speak. A request for comment on Geinzer's surprise resignation was made to Mayor Christopher Toby that has yet to be returned. Geinzer was hired in January of 2016. Tonight's meeting is set for 6.30 in council chambers. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer vetoed a local lawmaker's bill Friday. Senate Bill 11, introduced by State Senator Lana Tice of Brighton, would have required county clerks to issue and renew concealed pistol licenses regardless of any shutdown issued by executive or public health order. The governor said the bill would jeopardize Michigan clerks while also requiring law enforcement agencies to prioritize the issuance of concealed carry permits even when that be a poor use of resources during an emergency. Tice said while she was disappointed by the veto, she could not say she was shocked, saying that uh, she has never supported gun owners and likely never will. Tice said she hopes responsible gun owners will continue their efforts to protect that right and that she certainly would. A steady rain didn't deter about 100 diehard residents from enjoying the return of the Pinckney St. Patrick's Day Parade Saturday. The parade, after a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic, rolled through downtown Pinckney, featuring a veteran color guard from the Pinckney American Legion Post 419, Bagpipe ensembles including the Michigan Scottish Pipes and Drums and the Flint Scottish Pipe Band along with the Girl Scouts, politicians and fire trucks and other apparatus from the Hamburg and Putnam Township Fire Departments as well as the Disaster Assistance Response Team. A parade favorite, Carl the Leprechaun, was also in attendance. Now 79 years old, the unmistakably costume participant enjoying his 19th year helping to lead the parade. In fact, the last two years the parade didn't officially happen. Carl said he still walked the route in full leprechaun regalia anyway. And that's what's going on. Carl's quite a guy. He is. It was a lot of fun to talk to on, uh, on Saturday in downtown Pinckney. Uh, Mike and John got it going on, brought to you by our major sponsor, Firehouse Doors. Thanks again to uh, Mike and Kim for supplying us with the, uh, the tent out at uh, the Pingney Parade due to uh, the rain. It really helped yeah. out and kept us uh, uh, from getting too wet. It made the whole thing possible. It sure did. Yeah, otherwise, <laughs> I don't know. We would have been inside a car doing our broadcast. Not that we've ever done that no. before. We would never do that. It's unprofessional. Of course not. Uh, I want to circle back, though, to uh, the website. For those that haven't checked it out yet, uh, Mike and John podcast.com right you're gonna find a, a ton of information there not only uh, past shows but also local news you'll get to check out uh, things like submitting a birthday community events what else do we have on there uh, some some other fun stuff ways to enter to win uh, yeah. free lunch from torch 180 in fact uh, we've already gotten quite a few entries for the lunch for two which we give away every Friday of course when we talk to uh, uh, our friend Rhonda over at torch 180. Um, and uh, that seems to be a very popular giveaway. So if you want to be part of that, of course, you just go to mikeandjohnpodcast.com and you can find the contest, uh, contest entry uh, area there and click it in. Uh, we have a picture gallery that we've added, merch store, which we've mentioned. Um, I do want to point out the, the community calendar. Uh, if you have a local event that's going on, nonprofit uh, group, uh, or other thing that's community oriented, we would like to help you get that fact out there. So send us that information and there's a place you can do that uh, where you can just you know type in all the information, send it to us and we'll get it posted on our website. And uh, for the merch store, the way that works, you click on the merch store, you can order your t-shirts, bumper stickers, coffee mugs. It'll be all through the spirit of Livingston. They've been a great partner in helping us uh, get get product put together and get it out because we've had requests for all these things. And if you've got a request too, you can put that in and we'll see if we can make that happen too through our merch store, along with our friends uh, at the uh, Spirit of Livingston made the great banner for us. And the uh, Mike and John got it going on uh, bumper stickers. So thanks to them. And uh, we're going to hopefully team up and get a nice team together for the Walk for Warm. Right. Which That's, is coming up in May. Yeah, May 14th at the Heartland Sports Service Center, Old Heartland High School. And uh, if you want to uh, be a part of the Mike and John team um, and make a donation, all you have to do, you can do, it's real simple to do, all you have to do is text Livingston3, just text that to 71777, and you'll be making a donation right to the Mike and John walk team for the uh, Livingston Walk for Warmth. 
and that is May 14th. And uh, hopefully we'll have uh, some special Mike and John stuff to give away for our team members. Well, we should point out, it is a walk team. Right. So we, we will be walking team style. Right. Almost like we're the Sharks or the Jets. <laughs> So in West Side do Story, yeah. we'll a lot doing, of, yeah. it's it's like mob walking. <laughs> we're we're going to have dance numbers. Mob walking. <laughs> oh, you know the flash flash mob. Okay. You know flash sure, mob sure. walking. John will be leading us in the oh, steps. Absolutely. We've got our friend Laura Mandernack, who's a Zumba teacher. We'll get her out there leading a the little Zumba walk as a part of the walk. How far do we got to go? Well, you just walk around the high school. Okay, we walk around yeah. the high school once. No, you go several times. Several times. Yeah, as many times as you want. I mean, well, and, and for those that uh, have imagined back when we worked in radio, John doing that strut to pick a oh, gift from underneath true. the tree. I right. mean, you'll, you'll get to see that live. Yeah, you will. In person. Oh, my God. While wearing a mic and John boy, got it going boy, the on. donations are going to flow yeah, in now. Yeah, they are. He's quite yeah. the strutter. It should be see, only me that sees this. I, I can see John King strut. Oh, Ooh. where do I give my money? Yeah. <laughs> Although you won't be able to video it because he owns the rights to well, that Well, yes, it's my personal <laughs> trademark strut. I have to go through lawyers and get that all taken yeah, care of. It, so. You know, somebody mentioned while we were at the parade about bringing us a Guinness, and that never really happened. No. We what waited. happened there? I don't know. It was They teased us. Here's, here's why I bring this up, because a recent study said that if you drink a beer, half a pint of beer, right. it will improve your memory by 20%. Okay, how about a full pint of beer? I think there's a well, tipping point, well, and I think it's <laughs> after that point, it's like, yeah, then it gets, goes down. Yeah, it's just a half a pint, uh, okay. or a pint, yeah, half a pint in the morning, or whenever. <laughs> okay, nothing's the same as a drinking problem, like getting well, up and only, drinking a half pint of Guinness. It's only a half a pint of beer to start the day. It's like okay. having a cup of coffee, right? Get no. some brain going. No, do no. This. no, I think it's a bad idea. I just thought I'd bring it up. Right, of course. We're I, right, I could see how a little bit of alcohol would stimulate the brain, but I think at a certain point it's... That's when a lot of great ideas come up. Oh, yeah, You and I should go into business. This is how this came up. We should go into business together. We should start a podcast together. Well, that's how this all started. That's what I'm saying. Right. Well, (laughs) not a great example. Maybe we had more than a half a bite. That's true. (laughs) Oh, that's our alarm. It's time for our community spotlight. It is time for the community spotlight. That's our community spotlight alarm that goes off. The warning. Of course, Community Spotlight sponsored by Jordan Genso with the Genso team at Remax Platinum. Jordan and Ruth love baking for clients as well as anyone who refers friends and family. Jordan made us a loaf of bread last week. And the bottom line is we would like another loaf. So uh, every time uh, uh, someone gives them a call, says, you know what? I heard this on uh, the Mike and John podcast. Uh, we get a loaf of bread. You know, So every time, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if that's true, but I'm no, making I, it up. No, you're just making it up yeah, as you go along. <laughs> so, <laughs> How many pints did you have before the show? <laughs> <laughs> I need some bread to soak it up. So when it comes time to buy or sell, give Jordan a call, 248-444-9777. Tell him you love the show. And uh, even if you tell me you just kind of like it, yeah, I'd yeah, like to hear hopefully that. Hopefully, we'll get some bread. And we met Jordan and his uh, lovely daughter Stella on yeah. Saturday out at the St. Paddy's Day Parade. And uh, I think him and Stella do listen to the show on their way to school. Yeah, so, they do. So, we hello, Stella. That. All right, we're going to. Uh, why is this not going? I don't know. I don't know. There, there we go. go. Okay. There we go. All right. The phone hadn't woken up yet. Steve Schulte is going to join us to talk right. about the concert for UK uh, Ukraine. Good morning. Well, Good morning, Steve. It's Mike and John from Mike and John Got It Going On. Hey, Mike and John Got It Going On. I do agree with that 100%. <laughs> All right. Good to hear, Have of you... course. You're in our community spotlight today, Steve. Oh, my gosh. That's what that blind yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Do you, uh, have you had your half pint of Guinness this morning? Uh, no, I took the uh, day off. So oh, be, okay. Uh, straight when I'm we, to you we were just talking about, uh, there was a study that said if you drink a half pint of Guinness... Uh, you, it, it Your brain power yeah. improves by twenty percent. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, uh, I'll uh, I'll take that up right away. Right. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Good. Good. Good job, sir. Now, now, Steve, you've got this concert for Ukraine going on Saturday at uh, seven p.m. at St. Mary Magdalene in the community room over in uh, in Brighton on Old Twenty Three. Got a, a pretty impressive lineup of uh, entertainers, and I know you've done this in the past, so you're you're not just a guy that's throwing this together. Well, you know, I like to call myself a producer because it's really cool. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've been producing these variety shows, and I tell you what, the first one that I decided to do, I was just shaking in my boots, and uh, for the six months that I was planning it, 
I was like, I could just cancel this, you know, and then nobody, <laughs> nobody would know. Right. And, but I freaked, I, I, I just kept on going and I made it happen and I've done four variety shows now. So it, it's kind of, uh, you know, old hat, I suppose. And then of course, like everybody else, I'm sitting around wondering what I can do to help out the people in Ukraine and donating money seems like a good idea so let's put on a show raise some money and donate some money to the people of Ukraine yeah now the money that's going to be raised at the show and again this is Saturday 7 p.m. at St. Mary Magdalene Church in Brighton that's going to go to Catholic Relief Services and uh, and that money will be specifically designated to help the people of Ukraine absolutely uh, this is a organization that's been around for a long long time they have an A plus rating so uh but, uh, you know, if people want to donate to other uh, aspects of uh, to help out Ukraine, that's certainly fine. It's just kind of a, the, we're doing this to uh, make an impetus to uh, to do something, uh, right. you know, uh, physical. So. Yeah. so let's talk about some of the uh, the guests you have for the uh, the variety show coming up on, uh, on Saturday. Well, the first one I have to mention is probably uh, the Michigan troubadour, Neil Woodward. Uh, he has been involved in uh, a couple of the variety shows that I put on, so um, I know him pretty uh, fairly well. I, I met him by tuning his piano, by the way. I'm a piano tuner, so I'll just put that little uh, word out there. Wait a minute. A producer and a piano tuner yeah. all in one? You buried the lead on that Man. one, Steve. <laughs> and, a, and a boat captain and a music director at a Catholic Man, church. Yeah. Wow. wow, you got a lot of hats to wear, Steve. That's a, that's a pretty big business card you have. <laughs> 10 gallon hat. <laughs> your LinkedIn page is packed, man. You know, and the thing is, you're, you're right. So even if it was just Neil Woodward, that'd be a great show yeah. in and of itself. We've talked to Neil, and of course, he's been yeah. around for so long and such a great musician, just a great guy. Yeah. But you've got uh, quite a lineup of musicians that starts with Neil Woodward and then it just goes on. Right. Well, I just, uh, what I did to, because uh, I had no, I, okay, so I decided to do this show less than two weeks ago. I was playing mass, and the Holy Spirit said, uh, "You got to do this." So uh, I called Neil first thing, and I was like, "I told him the idea," and uh, Neil's like, "Well, let me uh, let me see if I can get some people together." So <clears throat> literally, like ten minutes later, he called up and he said, "I got Matt Watrova, I got Mustard's Retreat, I got Kitty Donahoe, Grammy Award winner, I got Dan Hall, <clears throat> and..." Um, and then I was like, well, I got to do something. So I'm going to throw on my Elton John costume and we'll, you know, do some uh, the darker side of Elton John, like Mad Man Across the Yeah, world. yeah. And so that's, and, the, that's uh, the Stilton ticking, John band, right? Tick, ticking from Caribou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, uh, that's, that's the Stilton John band is your <clears throat> Elton John tribute. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. I have these really high heel shoes and an outrageous costume, and I'm, I'm already six foot two, so... I kind of look like I'm on stilts, so uh, I'm the taller, cheesier version of the Love it. And, uh, of course, you have to have the uh, rhinestone glasses, or at least uh, uh, yeah. bejeweled glasses anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the glasses that my sister made for me in 1976. <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah. All right, so again, uh, the show, 7 o'clock, Saturday at St. Mary Magdalene Church in the community room uh, in Brighton off Old US 23. Um, and, you know, I, I guess going back to the, where you said the Holy Spirit, you know, came to you and, and brought you this, and then you talked to Neil, and the rest kind of came together. Um, yeah. You know, I guess to a certain extent, we look at what's going on in Ukraine and uh, and see that uh, just devastation and the tragedy. and the It is yeah. heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And I think for a lot of us, we just go, what can I do? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was saying, what can I do? And then... Uh, then it's like, you know, there's a lot of things you can donate to. And it's like, well, which one is, you know, um, you know, real and which one is going to be a scam. So uh, this organization, the uh, Catholic Relief Services, has been around a long time, yeah. A plus rating. So uh, I think it's a win win. And win wins are always good. Yeah, they <laughs> are. How many, how many people can we fit in the uh, community room there at St. Mary Magdalene? That is a really, really good question, and that's why you're professional because uh, I think we have only room for about 200. All okay. right. So, and so, do you have to? Can you get tickets beforehand, or is it at the door only? Or that's another good question. There are no tickets. No tickets. It's you just, just show up. Just show up at the door and make a donation. If you like. <clears throat> right. So it's a goodwill donation. Whatever, whatever anyone thinks that they can possibly give to help out the people of Ukraine, uh, Absolutely. that will uh, Absolutely. that will be accepted. And uh, uh, I, I think, and, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. 
No, no. And then usually, and, uh, we uh, provide uh, some hot uh, snacks, some popcorn, some um, coffee, some water. And uh, the, the huge thing about this uh, venue, I don't even know if I should tell this out in public or anything. Just keep it between you and me, okay? All right, just you, me, and John, <laughs> and the podcast listeners. Right. And it's, viewers. Uh, this venue is BYOB. Oh. So it's so, like going to Pine Knob when we were kids. You mean bring your own bread? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> You're not opening up the wine room at the church. <laughs> right. No way, man. Father's not going to come in on Sunday and go, hey, where's the wine? <laughs> That's Schultz. <laughs> no. No, so so you, you know, and I'm sure it'll be uh, people will be respectful of that too. So, but uh, well, like yeah, you said, yeah, yeah. And you put on these you put on these shows in the past, uh, the variety shows, uh, yeah. which people have come out and enjoyed and had a good time. And like you said, it was that was always the sort of the you know the unspoken thing that you know you can come out and enjoy yourself. And people have done so and and, and made it a, a fun night. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can bring uh, you know a little uh, uh, six pack cooler. If you can bring a bottle of wine. And, and everybody's, you know, very, very uh, respectful and uh, well behaved. Yeah, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful atmosphere. Here, so. Yeah, and, and it's going to be a great night of music. Again, the concert for Ukraine uh, this Saturday at St. Mary Magdalene Church. Uh, Neil Woodward, uh, Matt Matroba, yeah. uh, Mustard's Retreat, Kitty Donahoe, uh, Dan Hall, and not least, not last but least, whatever. <laughs> Uh, the Stilton yeah, John Band. I think Stilton I messed that all John up. Band. Stilton I'm John. I'm sorry. Yes, because he's very tall. I'm sorry. I've already had my Guinness. Louder than a condor. <laughs> than a bear. So, <laughs> are we going to hear Honky Cat? <laughs> oh, you know, no. I, I do have a fondness for Honky Cat, but that's a little too light, you know. Ah, you, you're you're going to go, yeah, you're dark. You said this is dark. dark. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we gotta go dark with the help, John. Yeah, right. All right, that's true. But uh, it, it's—I mean, it's even—you know—even if this wasn't connected to what's going on in Ukraine, it'd be a wonderful night of music, which it's going to be anyway. Adding well, in, yeah, adding in the fact that you know this is a lot of people's opportunity to make sure that their money is going to the people of Ukraine. Uh, through Catholic Relief Services and, like you said, A-plus charity rated, so you know that the money's going to get there. Um, yeah. Boy, that is a win-win. Is there a, a website for information, Steve, or no? No. Um, you know, to show uh, up Saturday hey, But you've got... Call me, man. Give, give my phone number. I mean, I'm a piano tuner. It's out there. It's not okay. Piano tuner and a producer. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Do you do drywall? <laughs> uh, but I think if yeah, if people do, uh, if they just search out "concert for Ukraine Brighton," I'm sure they'll find it coming up on Facebook. Um, yeah, I guess, and uh, you could also look at any of the uh, websites for the uh, artists you know, deal with. Like oh, Neil Woodward, great Matt, point. Uh, they're all advertising it on yeah. their, uh, you know, particular um, all right. websites. Well, you know what? You know what, Steve? We're going to make this the inaugural community event that we're going to put on the MikeAndJohnPodcast.com website because we have a community calendar. You know, we just debuted this last week, so we're going to put this up on our community calendar, and people can get details there. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so this is great. I mean, I don't feel rushed because uh, you guys interviewed me, uh, you know, at your previous job, and it just seemed like there was just no time to talk. Well, that's true, but yeah. we're done now. <laughs> so, uh, so oh, this, this is an awkward <laughs> transition, Steve. <laughs> well, Steve, you're done. Goodbye. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that is, you know... <laughs> you know, it is interesting that you, you bring that up, the whole the, the, the difference between doing a podcast and, and obviously being where we were yeah, before. Yeah, commercial radio. It's a different, a whole yeah. different ballgame. You know, on the other hand, we do try to keep things moving along. It can, you know, we don't want to, it can't be a three-hour, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, things in the morning should be moving along. Right. So... All right, Steve. We so appreciate we, we've it. We've got to move along. <laughs> so, so I said, awkward transition yeah. that you bring that up, and then we go, okay, well, well we're done now. We, we, we can't really move along until we mention that the first variety show, uh, Mr. John King was there, and he acted as Mr. Tudball in a scene with uh, yeah. Mrs. Wiggins and Mr. Tudball. Yes, ah, yes. Mrs. Mrs. Wiggins. I yes. remember rehearsing Ma for that. Many people wanted to forget it. Yeah. <laughs> did, he, did he make you? The Mrs. Wiggins no, well, he brought in the You should have seen him scooting yeah. around with his little butt, yeah. you know, swiggling around. Mrs. Like, Wiggins? Yeah. <laughs> it was I quite the sight. Put on a wig and yeah. Right, right. Uh, right. <laughs> Only on Saturday night. Yeah, if you right. need us, Steve, we, we can be there. <laughs> oh, if you guys want to put together a little combo scoop, 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Steve Schulte, thanks so much, and good luck with the event. I, I hope you raise a ton of money for the uh, concert for Ukraine. Saturday, St. Mary Magdalene, uh, 7 o'clock. Come, uh, it's, it's just come as you are and have a good time. Thanks for joining right. us today, Steve. All right. Thanks, guys. Why don't right. we talk so again? again? Yeah, have a good That's one. Good. All, All right. right. Community Spotlight brought to you by Jordan Genso. And I um, want to remind everybody, we are getting that team together for the uh, the Walk for Warm. Right. And uh, you can call Jordan, by the way. Uh, he sponsors the Community Spotlight, 248-444-9777. You can find him on Facebook at Jordan Genso Community Servant, Community Realtor. Right. And again, for the Walk for Warm, which you just mentioned, if you want to make a donation there, we've got a Mike and John fundraising team. Uh, and you can do that super simple. You can just text Livingston3 to 71777, and we'll have more details about that coming up. Yeah, it's coming up uh, middle of May. So a couple of uh, notes in the entertainment industry. Syndicated daytime talk show, Maury, yes. is ending its 30-year run, 31-year run. Maury Povich will be uh, 83 this year. Okay, now there's a lot of people I think that hear that they go, I thought it ended already. He, it's still on? <laughs> oh yeah, it's on. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen Maury Povich on in like 30 years. Uh, you but know, it's but there. Oh, and, it's and there. They're probably just showing every other week the, the same as a paternity series. Well, I, I think it, it are there are new shows, but you could. it's hard to tell because it's pretty much the same thing, just different people. Um, but, uh, yeah, the clothes, Jay, that's the only reason how you can know. It's like the if clothes they, are a little the, more The clothes updated. are different. Over 30 years, I mean, yeah. you know, but... Uh, our clothes are about 30 years old well, that you're seeing here this morning. <laughs> Alison Krauss is going to sing with Def Leppard on their new album. Really? Alison Krauss, known for Americana music, bluegrass, country, most recently collaborating with uh, Robert Plant. I don't know if you heard about that from Zeppelin. Oh, she's been, her and uh, Plant have been together for years doing a couple of different collaborations. Well, she, um, she, was, uh, she reached out to Def Leppard and they said, hey, we have two songs. We'd like you to be a part of one of them. So she checked out the songs and um, said, you know what, I like them both. And then the, Joe Elliott was like, well, we'll just do both then. So the new album coming out uh, May 27th. The new single is out online called uh, Kick. It's a good one. If you like Pour Some Sugar On Me, you're gonna like Kick. All it's right. one of those arena rock tunes. So good deal. kind of cool stuff there. Uh, we, of course, are brought to you by Firehouse Doors. Mike and Kim Witt being supporters of the show since we, uh, since we got up and running. And uh, we appreciate all the support Mike and Kim have given us. You need garage door, a new garage door, you need a garage door repair, they can take care of you. Yep, and they've been in Livingston County for 24 years, of course. And uh, Mike, a proud U.S. Uh, Air Force veteran, and uh, they have every kind of uh, door that you could possibly want or need. And uh, it's firehouse doors, of course, and uh, we just really uh, absolutely appreciate uh, what they bring to the show, and we can't find our Firehouse Doors copy because I think we lost well, it. Well, our we producer left. Yeah. <laughs> so well, the producer went out and had a full pint of Guinness, he did. and so that's a problem when that happens. I hate when that. happens. We'll just zoom in on there. You know. <laughs> no, no. Well, we got it up on the. We got the logo up. All right. Uh, Other things. So uh, yeah. So uh, again, uh, always very appreciative of Firehouse Doors and all that they provide, and you can give them a call at this number right there, which we don't have in front of us because we don't have it. We lost it. 810-599-7480. Are you sure? <laughs> yep, I'm okay, sure. Good. See that? I'm reading it backwards. <laughs> All right, that's quite impressive. That's See what eyes. that Guinness will do wow. for you? Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, because we just, just realized we <laughs> don't have it. Yeah. Right. Our producer was he took to the weekend off. Welcome to the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is live podcast. Well, it's recorded. But anyway, you get it. Yeah, we'll edit later. Much later. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Right. Uh, other things uh, coming up tomorrow. We will be talking recycling here in Livingston County. Yes. What yes! Got? What do you got? <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff. No, we'll be talking with Julie Cribley, of course, from Recycle Livingston. And uh, you, they do, you know, really quite a lot of good here uh, in the county. And for a lot of folks, they use curbside recycling, which, of course, you know, has its merits. Uh, Recycle Livingston, on the other hand, I mean, I think you, if we'll, we'll talk more with Julie about this tomorrow, but 
uh, Recycle Livingston is more of a direct recycling source. You know that the things that you bring to Recycle Livingston are going to actually uh, get recycled the way that they should be to the full percentage that they should. And so it's a great community organization. So if you're concerned about the environment and you want to make sure that your recycling is actually being recycled, because a lot of people put it in that curbside, and, and I'm one of them. I use yeah, curbside recycling. Sometimes you wonder. It's like, is it all going well, into one place? This they is, send two different uh, trucks? You, you, you kind of wonder. Well, you, that's what we're going to, we'll talk with more Julie about that. But if you go to Recycle Livingston, you know that your material is going to get the, recycled to the fullest extent possible. And that's what you want. So we'll talk with Julie tomorrow from Recycle Livingston. All right, our two cent history lesson today for this March 21st. In 1891, right. it happened. What? The I do's. What happened? A Hatfield. Married a McCoy, well, which ended the feud in West Virginia. Do you know how the feud started? I don't. The family feud. <laughs> well, that's kind of, it was. It started with an accusation yeah. of pig stealing. Oh, there won't be none of that. Pig stealing. No. Hey, you stole my pig. How could you? Hatfields and McCoys become one. Lasted twenty years. That feud did. Yeah. Over a stolen pig, allegedly. Well. Yeah. It was on this day in 1923, scientists made the claim that smoking was good for you because nicotine killed bacteria. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm having this for my health. Oh, yeah. There used to be commercials. Doctors recommend it. My, yeah, they yeah. Actually, and actually, my dad used to talk about there were commercials back in the 50s yeah. for, I think, uh, for Chesterfield. And they'd be like, oh, the doctors, the T-Zone. And they'd have like a, a you know, cutaway of a person's body. And they'd be like, this area here is, this is great for smoke. The your, your, your nasal passages in your lungs, you're like, yes, that's perfect for cancer. You're welcome. <laughs> well, see, it was the cancer that killed the bacteria. Right. So for you? <laughs> right. When you die, the bacteria <laughs> dies with you. Problem solved. <clears throat> 1962, a bear became the first creature to be ejected at supersonic speeds. What now? A bear. What now? Well, they, you know, it was uh, the ejection seat. <laughs> they put a <laughs> bear? They said, well, well, they needed something that was heavy enough. Did they not hear of crash test dummies? Well, not 1962. <laughs> <laughs> they could have taken a mannequin. What the hell? Know. This poor bear is like, what's going on? What's happening? He had a bear shoot. <laughs> See what I did there? The Beatles in 1964. Get out. Get out. <laughs> I'm ashamed. Never come back. This is now the John and John podcast. <laughs> All right, you can come back. You took the lesson with you, so I got nothing. You had nothing before I got here. Uh, <laughs> 1964. And, and now it's I nothing. Apologize it's to nothing that. times a two. Yeah. Don't use that. It's a dad joke and it sucked. The Beatles in 1964 set a record by having five billboards, uh, five singles in Billboard's top ten. Five wow. hits at the same time in the top ten. You talk about a chart hog. I mean, I guess. I guess it's okay. I mean, they were pretty good tunes in 1964. Michael Jackson's interior decorator in 2001 told the Times newspaper that the singer had 17 life-size dolls, adult and child sizes, all fully dressed in his bedroom okay. for company. Okay. Well, he was a lonely guy. Um, That's normal, isn't it? the police <laughs> look into that, maybe? <laughs> so let's just say you happen to be at Neverland. I have some questions. You walk in. <laughs> you're getting a tour. You walk into Michael Jackson's bedroom, and you see 17 yeah. mannequins. No. I don't think so. No, that's not, uh, that's not right. <laughs> in 2006, three South African women whose father, Solomon Linda, wrote the song, The Lion Sleeps Tonight in 1939, won a six-year court battle that gave them 25% of all past and future royalties right. for the song. Yeah. It's a great story. There was a, a magazine article a couple years ago that I read talking about that whole story and how it all came out and how they had been denied those rights for years yeah. and then they the, the daughters had fought and finally were able to you know win what was theirs well there. and the great part about the story is the guy was just a cleaner at the Johannes Re uh, Johannesburg record company when he wrote the song right. virtually got nothing for it he died in 1962 with only 25 bucks in his bank account the song has been recorded by what, yeah, numerous everybody artists. and of course the Lion King may have helped it out a little bit a song little. had earned fifteen million dollars right. for its use. So that's one of those rare people. occasions where, because especially back in the fifties and sixties, well, pre, I mean, artists were totally constantly ripped off yeah. uh, and and not given their due credit for what they should have been. And so that's one of those rare cases where somebody came back and was able to get what they were deserving. So that's nice. 
And great things happened also in 2006 as the Linda family was getting that money. The social media website Twitter was launched. The oh. first tweet by co-founder Jack Dorsey. Right. Send money here. And finally, in 2016, a rare Beatles record found in the attic of Les McGuire, the keyboardist in a fellow Liverpool act known as Jerry and the Pacemakers, okay. sold for over $100,000 at auction. It was a 10-inch acetate of the songs Till There Was You and Hello Little Girl. From 1962, the record was described as the holy grail item of Beatles memorabilia. It's the first Beatles disc to be cut before the band broke into the national charts. Mm. Pretty cool stuff. That's your Tucson history lesson. That's very um, historic. Well, it's a, his a history lesson. You're a history major. Well, sometimes you're, you're a lesson to say something you desire. Wow. <laughs> I got kicked out? I got critiqued? <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll just take my name right off the stickers <laughs> and John. I tried and got it, it going it's on. It's too expensive to do that, so <laughs> we got white out. Yeah, we're or, just, or some stickers, some masking tape band aids. Right. We can take my name right well, off. We could, work, we could try. I <laughs> we could work yeah. on that. No, we won't do want to thank one of our sponsors too, of course, our friends at Murphy Family Auto. Right. Call today. Schedule an appointment five one seven five five two thirty forty, and uh, Gordon, just go to murphysfamilyauto.com. Don't forget to go to speaking of dot coms to Mike and John Podcast dot com. Right. Latest news, events, merch, fun stuff. Oh, now we're gonna add fun stuff. Gotta add fun stuff. All right, man. And details on the concert for Ukraine. Right. First day of spring. What are you gonna do? I looked like you were going to burp there for a I second. I did. It was, I was an internal. kind of held it, it in. I am internal, yeah. Kind of taste that thing. Like, mm, yeah. 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 What's the worst taste you've ever had? <laughs> no, I'm not going there. <laughs> this, this is over. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. We are in the post-show now. Exclusive YouTube content. What do we got? Anything? Of course we have something. Okay. You act like we come to this oh, show. Oh, well, yeah, prepared. no, we would never do that. It's so. it's a Monday, and right. that's a uh, let's go to the CD collection right. Monday. Can we do that this? Friday? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, Friday we had the big reveal. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, gosh, man. Jeez, sorry. Memory's starting to go. Starting to go. Hold your pencil. Got a big pencil. Got a pencil? Yeah. Who are you? All right, give me a shelf. One, two, three, or four. All right, go, go one. Go on one? Yeah. Go with this right. top shelf. We're going top shelf top CDs shelf. here. He's back over All there right. at the uh, Mike and John CD collection. Oh, I remember right. this one. All right, what do you got? Counting Crows. Oh my God. Yeah. I remember they came out when we were working at a another oh, station. Though. Another station. Yeah. A long time ago. Very long time ago. And um, Mr. Jones was right. the big first single from <clears throat> Counting Crows. Was it their first single off that? It was their big hit. It was I their know. biggest hit. Um, but I thought the first Jones single. And me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the Counting Crows. Don't come rushing no, the pod crowd. Don't yet. do that. Round here. Round. That, I thought that round here was the first single. Was it? Yeah. It was a good tune. I too. think. I, I don't know why right now. <laughs> what do you know? Look I, it up. I have to look it up now. No, you don't have to look it up. Okay, What's good. the story behind uh, the Counting Crows? Is this um, an original? It was a big CD. It had a couple good hits on it, and I bought it. <laughs> That's the end of that story. You bought it? Well, I got it for free. <laughs> That's what I worked at radio stations. <laughs> you got free stuff. This one's been through a few cars. Oh, yeah, it has. Crack Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, put that, pop that in and throw this on the Personally, seat. I know you probably don't like this one, but uh, I liked uh, Accidentally in Love that they had on the uh, Shrek soundtrack. Right. That was kind of a fun I, song. Why, why would I not like that? I don't know, because it's probably too poppy for you. What do you mean too poppy too, too for me? Poppy. I like pop music. Yeah. I should have grabbed the Hanson CD then. That would have been fun. You know, I have a Hanson CD. Go look. Go get it. It's the Hansons. Go get it. What am I? That's a better story. Oh, the, the Hansons? Save it for a different... Oh, no. This is extended uh, Monday uh, content. It's extended Monday content. Go get it. No, I'll tell you. What shelf is that on, John? Well, it's whatever. It's in their alphabetical. I have to, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but this is. <laughs> aren't you glad H you waited for this? I it should be the Hanson. So it's under H, though. All right. Is it before Harrison? <laughs> Did you put him in that alphabetical order? You know. Do you not see it? 
The Hansons? I'm looking. Yeah, here it is. I got okay, it. The Hansons. Right. This isn't the Hanson Brothers. No. This isn't Mbop. No, it's not. Thank no. you. I would have never sent you back there. <laughs> Mbop was back there. Mbop. <laughs> not what wanted you to do. Mbop. Okay. So this band, the, the Hansons. Hansons. Get clear there. Uh, uh, Toledo-based band. And, Very um, popular. They were. Well, in the West Suburban <laughs> Toledo's. <laughs> I used to have a new music show, The Fringe. Yeah, People right. are still talking oh, about God, it to yeah, this they day. Are. Oh, yeah, they are. Remember and, John King and The Fringe when he yeah. played songs with <laughs> the F word in it all the time? <laughs> well, my boss sure does, and I have the memo to prove it. Why I'm still in radio, I don't know. I'm well, not, you're not. Well, you know what? I'm not. <laughs> It only took 25 more years to get me out. <laughs> and you didn't even have to say that. Anyway, word. wherever the Hansons are now, but by the way, this CD is really good. I mean, this band was really very singable uh, pop music, very good. I don't know what the hell happened to them. Uh, probably working at, you know, Burger King now. BP. But, uh, <laughs> Rob's Fashion Corner was the name of the CD, by the way. So if anyone can find the Hansons, they could be guests here on the Mike and John podcast. <laughs> That would be a thriller, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, God, yeah, it would. All right. That's, all that's the end of the content. That seemed like that was yeah. a you stretch. Know what? You, you built it up. I thought we were going to be no, talking about was Mbop. Much. Just, no, they, those guys were good. No, they were fun. They were fun guys. I actually went out with them and, uh, and oh, okay. had some beers. Yeah. Probably some Guinness. We had more than half a pint, though. Can I hit the stop button now? Wait oh, you have it already? Wait for it. No. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.